What's going on everybody? Doug Price here from the Gabby Social Club Podcast. Do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe, turn on notifications. If you, if you like these videos, as I've said before, I'm doing about one to two a week. So would love for you to subscribe and follow along with what we're doing here at this channel. Just released a brand new podcast episode. I had Luis Torres and Tequila General Goros Dieta. This is a story that is so much more than just about tequila. The general was a real person over a hundred years ago and Luis along Along with his team, they've really decided to honor this general and to continue to share his story because as Luis tells us during the show, this is a story that not too many people know about. If you're in certain parts of Mexico, you will know this general and this story, but if you're in other parts, they've kind of erased it from history and so he's here to bring this back. At the age of 24, he becomes a general and at some point he gets exiled. He gets exiled to El Paso, Texas. We talk about this. There's some symbolism here as to what's happening now in El Paso, Texas, as their U.S. office is there. Uh, but he comes back, and at that time, the government was oppressing the people of, of freedom of religion for their faith. And the general really takes it upon himself to lead this Cristero movement. And what he does is he takes this group of, they're not soldiers, they're not trained, they don't have weapons, and he leads them against an army of over 25,000 people. People. And the people that he's fighting, they didn't really know why they were fighting. And so they don't have vision. We talk about when you don't have vision, it's easy to be overtaken. And that's what happens. And the general starts to win this movement and defeat, as we talk about a David and Goliath story. Now his life is cut short. At one point, he is looking to overthrow the president, the current president at that time, and he gets ambushed and he gets killed. But the values and, and hope and, and freedom of religion and just having your freedom all together really embodied and what General Gorostieta was doing. So uh, Luis wanted to tell this story on another level. There are so many coincidences that just continue to affirm to them that naming this brand after the general and telling the story is very, very important. Beautiful Bottles, the presentation is to really honor the military forces. Uh, they've got a Blanco and they've got a Hoven. This is the Blanco here. Very simple, but this is a heavy bottle. This is not a cheap bottle. You see the beautiful inlay here for this topper. Uh, not a cheap bottle at all. Very simple, very elegant. We talked a little bit about just the economics of this bottle. This topper is more expensive than this bottle and this is not a cheap bottle. So there's a lot of value here in the bottle of what they're being intentional on and wanting to honor not just the general but the military in itself. And this is the box for the Hoven. Uh, very, very well done. The colors here are to honor the military, their uniform. When you open it up, there's a lot of information to go over in this box. So really well done with the presentation for this tequila. So what's going on with this tequila? Luis partners up with Ana Maria Romero. She's a legendary tequila maker. She has been behind some other really great brands. So she's at the helm and he's just learning as much as he can from. We talk about going through fermentation and distillation. She's there every step of the way testing. He said that when she comes into a distillery, she really takes over. This started at NOM 1499. There's a lot of great brands coming out of NOM 1499. This has since been moved over to NOM 1414, one of my favorite distilleries, the Vivanco Distillery. Ana Maria Romero is still at the helm and in charge, but they have moved it over to NOM 1414. And they just felt it was the right fit. He said 1499 was great. They were great to work with, but just felt more comfortable at NOM 1414. So as the Blanco that's out now is at 1499, it is autoclave. As the new batches start to come out, they're gonna start to come out uh, later on this summer. And this is at 1414, which is the brick oven. So you're gonna notice some differences here between those Blancos. The Hoven is coming out of 1414. They wanted to do a Hoven because they just didn't see too many Hovens out there. So they started playing with the ratios of a Blanco and a Reposado mix. They end up going with a 60-40 ratio, 60% 60 Blanco, 40% of the Reposado. Reposado is aged for eight months, blending it with this 60% of the Blanco. Both of these are really well made. The Blanco, I had to let it sit a little bit as they even recommend on their website to let it sit and open up, let some oxygen, some air get into it. At first, I did get a big burst of alcohol, but after you let it sit, man, it really opens up. It was so creamy, it was buttery. 
and it just continued to give more and more flavor. It's like all of a sudden another burst of flavor came up for this Blanco. Really, really well done Blanco. And then we get to this Hoven. This Hoven is soft, it, it's buttery, just like that Blanco. It's very silky. There's some citrus there. There's agave, a lot of agave here. A really, really well done Hoven. This Blanco I've seen online as low as $55. Don't have a problem with that. We're starting to see a lot of great quality Blancos in that $60, $65, $70, $75 dollar range. So this at $55, I don't have a problem with that. The Hoven, I've seen it on sale certain areas online for $99.99. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money when you think about what else you can get. But when you hear this story, when you see what's gone into this bottle, I don't have a problem paying a hundred bucks for this bottle. Again, especially when we talk about this story, what this means, uh, when we see the care that has gone into making this tequila. So definitely, you know, the Hoven may not be an everyday sipper. Uh, it's definitely a treat at that hundred dollar price point, but that Blanco, man, for 55 bucks, very, very delicious. Both of these really, really great options that I want I want to encourage you to check out like I said, we talk through the story, we talk through all of the coincidences, we go through the process uh, for this tequila. If you wanna know what's next for this brand, make sure you check out the entire episode. You can listen to this episode wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, a lot of other things I don't remember the name of. If you search the Agave Social Club and you can listen to this entire episode. This is episode 47, so there's a lot of episodes if you have not caught up on, a lot of great guests, I want to encourage you to check out. I'm excited that at the end of July, we've got episode 50, uh, which means a lot to me because I've put a lot into the show over the past couple of years. And so to get to episode 50 means a lot. So I'm excited to share that with you as well. But I want to encourage you to check out Hinero Gorostieta Tequila. If you want to learn more about the brand, you can go to tequilagg.us. They've got a beautiful website. Luis is doing this thing right. He's not afraid to spend money on a great marketing team, on great branding. He is all in on this thing. This is not just a side project project to him. He does have a day job, but he is all in on this. He's got a hacienda up in Arandas named after the general. We talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, so man, really proud of what he's doing. He believes in this. Uh, this is more than just tequila. Go ahead and check out this entire episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Agave Social Club. If you ever have any questions for me or you have any brands that you want to recommend to be on the show in a future episode, you can reach out to me on Instagram or you can email me directly at the Agave Social Club at gmail.com. I'm Doug Price. Thanks for watching.